Welcome to your internet nook. This episode is on textures in watercolour. Watercolour textures are often presented using a grid. However, I prefer to present them in an example sketch or image. I'm starting with some short flicking motions with the brush to give the indication of a little patch of grass. I used a little too much water in this first patch, so I decided to try again. The first patch is a more 2D example of a patch of grass. The second gives a more 3D impression. The length of your strokes can give your image an impression of being a wilderness somewhere or in a neatly presented garden. I've selected a light green for my patches of grass, but do try changing up the colour of your grass at home to give an impression of a season or setting. Here I'm introducing seeds to the end of my stem. Layering different types of grass can create a more 3D effect, or again give an impression of a different season. These small flicks can also be used to create animal fur or other textures. Here I'm drawing a little hedgehog just to show you how this could be done. If you're not certain about the tone of your paint, try dabbing your brush in another section of the page that doesn't matter. This way you can see what tone or colour that paint is really going to turn out like. It's not always the same colour or tone as on your palette. For the sky, I'm going to wet the page first. Make sure you're using clean water or else the colour of your water may affect the colour of your final image. Then I'm adding a vivid blue so it looks like a warm sunny day. I find it personally quite hard, but try to avoid overworking your sky, your paint will work out where it wants to go. Using a side to side motion with the brush, I'm going to show you how to create an impression of a horizon. Adding water to the top of the horizon area will further diffuse the colour and so create a hazy effect. This hazy effect is just what we want, to merge the sky into the sea. To give you a further impression of what I'm talking about in this instance, I'm making one of these gradients under my sky as it might give you a better impression of the overall idea of this technique. If you find that you've added too much pigment to the horizon area, but your sea-like area is still wet, you can move that pigment down using the tip of your brush and moving it to the base of the image. For a leaf texture that I'm going to show you, we need a lot more paint or pigment on our brush than we need when making an ocean horizon. I'm going to work my brush and water into the paint colour of choice to pick up as much as possible. Then straight away I'm going to take the tip of the brush to the page and make my little stem. Then, using more of the body of the brush, I'm going to make the leaves. This technique will create a strong colour, 
and less smooth texture than we see in the ocean strokes. Feel free to use the tip of your brush to put more pigment into your leaf areas. The bolder the better in this case. After this technique, make sure you wash off your brush fully. Now I'm going to show you how to add drops of water to a block of colour to create a dispersed look. I'm showing you this effect in two different colours, as the texture could be used in some experimental abstract work. Finally, I'm going to show you how to add spots of colour to wet paint to create a different type of natural texture. I'm going to start by painting us a tree, making sure to use light brown. When picking up pigment, for this texture technique, try drying off your brush and then picking up the pigment from the palette. This way you'll pick up more pigment than water. Using short motions to dot the tree, I'm going to give it some texture. This texture could be used for the bark of a tree or adding different colours to create a colour gradient or to have a darkening effect on your image to add shade or shadow. And there we are, six different textures with a little context. I hope you learnt something and that I'll see you again in another video. Until then, stay cosy.